Good morning on a shade day here on A to Z Sports. Man, uh, another show uh, and another chance to talk about the Titans' new quarterback, Malik Willis. Now, where he will rank as the new quarterback, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. But Jim Wyatt, uh, Jack's boy, Jim, uh, came came with some fire on his mailbag, so we were created a topic off of that. Logan Woodside versus Malik Willis. I do think that that will be a competition this offseason that Titans fans will keep their eye on because third-round quarterback versus Logan Woodside, who signed a one-year deal, has not really gotten an opportunity within the league, has been a backup for a long time. What's going to happen? You know, And so we're going to talk about the percentage chance that Logan Woodside wins that job of QB2. We know QB1 is going to be Ryan Tannehill. They're going to roll with him. But who's going to get that opportunity? So uh, that's our first topic. Our second topic, though, very interesting. Dan Orlovsky went and predicted the Titans and the Colts full season. We'll play you that video of what Orlovsky said and the overall and I think it may surprise you of where the records end up for both the Titans and the Colts. And then we'll ask you, which I think is a very good question, the toughest two-game stretch of the Titans season. Two, not three, not four, not five, not six. This ain't D-Wade, D LeBron, and Chris Bosh. <laughs> this is two, the, the toughest two-game stretch of the Titans season. So we'll dive into that and get you guys' opinion. And plus throwing shade man i have a unique shade today jack my shade has to do with uh man how do i put this nicely uh it has to do with doctor a doctor okay doc okay. I, I was gonna go a little bit further but i think you may well you may not be able to guess it has to do with a sick doctor that's my tease Okay. A, a sick doctor. Uh, I can't wait for it. I'm I'm ready for it. I want to do it now, but that's not how this show goes. So, Jack, welcome in. Uh, tell the fine folks what they need to do. We'll get started. Man, doctors aren't supposed to be sick. They're supposed to be able to make people get healthy. So I'm, I'm ready for your shade later on. But, hey, while you guys are filing in, we're going to talk a little Willis, a little Woodside, who's going to be QB2 for the Titans heading into the season. Um, it, it's going to be a really, really fun show, I think, and it, it's going to be opinionated. Um, this is a hot button issue, and uh, I, I know you guys have opinions. I know everybody out there in Titans Nation has opinions, so we want to get those people in here. If you're watching on Facebook, share the show, share it to your timeline, share it to your friends' timelines, share it to Titans groups, share it to any groups you're in on Facebook. Let's bring everybody in here and get everybody's thoughts because y'all's opinions matter just like ours do. Um, if you're watching on Twitter, retweet the show. Put it all over everybody's timeline. Litter, litter your followers' timeline with this A to Z Sports Morning Show. We're here. We, we've got a lot of energy. We're ready to go today. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you tap that bell icon at the top of your screen so you get a notification every time we go live at A to Z Sports. You're not going to want to miss a second. If you're watching on Twitch, text your buddies. Hey, text them the link. Get everybody in here. We want to grow this conversation. It's a magnificent Wednesday. Let's have some fun. Yeah, let's have some fun and let's officially get started. Welcome to A to Z Sports. I am Zach Bingham. He is Jack Gentry. We are powered by BetMGM. Download the app today in your Apple or Android store and get started and start winning some money. I won some money on Jalen Brown last night with the mm -hmm. Celtics, even though they lost, which I was happy about. Jalen Brown won me some money on BetMGM. So shout out to our title sponsor, BetMGM. Also, our presenting sponsors, we could not... Do what we do without them. Farm Bureau Health Plans, better coverage, better rates, better service. FBHP.com slash A to Z. The Bone and Joint Institute, don't fumble on your recovery. State-of-the-art facility down there in Franklin, Tennessee, and satellite locations all across Middle Tennessee. And Wilson County Hyundai, quick trip down I-40 exit 236. Visit Payne Bone and his team at WilsonCountyHyundai.com. All right, Jack. Kudos to old Jack Gentry doing a little show prep yesterday. The grind never stops. Money never sleeps. And he sent me this little nugget based on Jim Wyatt's mailbag, which 
I, I thought it was pretty interesting because I hadn't really put the thought behind it. We saw Malik Willis last, you know, over the weekend in rookie minicamp. We haven't seen Logan Woodside this season because the official minicamp and OTAs have not started. That will happen in the next several weeks. But a questionnaire, and I want to feature this up there on the screen, ask Jim Wyatt, old Justin, I'm wondering about Malik Willis and what we are doing with the position this year. Well, Jim responds and says, hey, Justin, well, Malik took part in the team's rookie minicamp, and I thought he did well for the most part. He had a strong arm, and he has had great had a great attitude, but he's a work in progress, of course, and this work is just getting started. Ryan Tannehill will be the starter in 2022, and sitting here typing this in mid-May, I suspect Logan Woodside will be the number two, with Malik being the third QB and potentially – inactive on game days can Malik do enough in the next three to four months to convince his bosses that he can be trusted he is ready well we'll see I mean I, I think Jim Wyatt brings up a very good point of where we are now but the big question of where we're going Jack initial reaction once you read that before you sent it to me had you had I guess my question to you is have you had had you thought about that possibility even before? I mean, we've been caught up in Music City Malik Madness, and now all of a sudden we're kind of dumbing it back down to, hey, rookie, you're still a rookie. Yeah, I was surprised with how blunt Jim was in saying that, you know, it, but he did mention it's still May. There's three to four months before the season. There's a lot of work and a lot of growth that Malik, Will Malik Willis will be, will be putting in um ahead of week one of the regular season but uh, you know he for Jim to say that he thinks it's going to be Woodside over Willis to start the year um I think that's going to catch a lot of Titans fans by surprise you've got to remember though Logan Woodside he's been in the system for a little while Malik Willis coming out of Liberty he's pretty raw he's a project everybody knows that Titans fans know that Malik Willis is probably not going to have much of an impact this season so for Jim to say that you know Logan Woodside is probably QB two heading into the season. I I was surprised. I was surprised with it. Jim, you know, he 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 he's got an idea of what's going on inside that building. He's there every single day. He knows the ins and outs. He knows the Titans frontwards and backwards. So if anybody knows where the Titans stand with their backup quarterback situation, it's probably Jim. So you know, Woodside over Willis right now. That's no surprise, right? Willis has been with the Titans for a weekend. He's practiced for a weekend, rookie minicamp. That's all the Titans have seen from Malik Willis. So right now, yes, it's obviously Woodside over Willis heading into, you know, training camp. But with more reps, with more experience, you know, with a bit of growth and, and you know, as he comes around to learn what it takes to be an NFL quarterback or even just an NFL backup, that could change. We've got three to four months, you know, heading into August. We'll see where these two are at. But right now, Willis or Woodside over Willis is probably pretty obvious just with the lack of experience that Willis has at this point in the Titans offseason. I think it's more about where he was drafted. You know, if Malik Willis was drafted in the first round, do you think the same thing? If he's a first rounder, if the Titans go and grab Malik Willis with the 26th pick, I, 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 you know, do you I, feel I the know. same way? I, you, you, you expect more. We talked about expectations yesterday didn't we if you're a first rounder you have higher expectations now drafting Malik Willis late in the third round that if he's a first of, round pick do you feel the same way that you do no no I, if he's a I second more. round pick do you feel the same way that he, you do again I, I expect more from a round one or a round two kind of guy but with the Titans taking him in, in late in the third round they aren't putting a whole lot of pressure on Willis or themselves really to figure out what he can be in year one. But if you're the Titans, you want Willis to be two, right? You want to, now you don't necessarily want him to probably play, right? I mean, the whole reason why they draft him was a project quarterback with a high ceiling. He dropped, they traded up to get him because he was the highest guy on their board. They needed a quarterback. 
They needed to put pressure on Ryan Tannehill after he threw three picks against the Cincinnati Bengals. All of these things kind of stacked on themselves leading up to draft day. They found themselves in the third round on day two and said, look, let's go up and get Malik Willis, who was falling like wildfire. And maybe you can get the value that, I mean, let's talk about the wide receivers that the 49ers got from Debo in the second round. The Titans got from AJ. The Seahawks got from Russell Wilson in the third back when they drafted him. Maybe you could pull some value because all of these teams have passed and all of the quarterback movement in the offseason, right? The free free agency with, with movement was pretty rabid. You had, you know, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz. We're going to figure out what Deshaun Watson and Baker Mayfield. You have Russell Wilson. I mean, there was so much movement unique movement within this offseason now you go and you have the chance to get Malik Willis they do you know, I think you also have to have a safety valve before we get to our question and get interactive on our chat Ryan Tannehill has been pretty damn healthy as a titan right oh yeah he's done a great job avoiding injuries and I mean for a guy who plays the way that he does he's he, he's not afraid to run the football right if nothing's there uh, in the passing game, he's not afraid to tuck it and run. And, you know, the closest he's really come to injury was, if you remember, that finger roll he did into the end zone. That was it. That's as close as he's come to injury. And I know he got sacked a whole bunch last year. But, yeah, he, you know, from his Miami days, his, the ACL injury was a worry. Um, he took quite a beating in Miami. But in Tennessee, he stayed on the field, and that's that's what you need your QB1 to do. Yeah, and so they haven't really needed to use their backup quarterback. Now, Mariota was a different story. <laughs> they had to use their quarterback a lot. That was a headache. Titans fans remember that. You and I remember that. Marcus Mariota was a headache because he could not stay healthy. We were talking about what's going on with him. And the hardest part and the worst part about sports is Everybody tries to be close to the vest with their injuries, right? So we were guessing. We were trying to get inside information. Why wasn't he playing? And then the most important game of a, a the most important regular season game was that Sunday nighter against the Colts, and Mariota didn't play. Blaine Gabbert lost. Now, you know he he, he did win a playoff game. I don't want to uh, you know discredit that he he did go to Kansas City and 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 beat the Chiefs before they had Patrick Mahomes. But Ryan Tannehill has done a good job of being healthy. If he no longer can do that, because football is a game you never know, right? I mean, Mike Vrabel said it very eloquently. You are guaranteed to get hurt playing football. I mean, you're eventually going to get hurt. It's just the facts. Now, there's a difference between injury and not playing well. And I think the Titans are much closer to not playing well at the quarterback position than injury nowadays. So they go out and they draft Malik Willis. You know, Logan Woodside, how much belief do you actually have in Logan Woodside, though? Well, it, it depends when you're asking Logan Woodside to step in. Uh, you know, if, do I do I believe in Logan Woodside to be a, an effective backup? Not for more than a game, maybe two games. I mean, by now, Titans fans, he's been in the system for three years, right? He was on the practice squad in 2018. In 2019 and 2020, he served as Tannehill's backup, killing all of the guys the Titans brought in to challenge him, Trevor Simeon, Cole McDonald, Luke Falk, all of these no-name quarterbacks that have been washed aside. Uh, Woodside has, has, has stayed. Yeah, He's they've awesome. tried to push his ass out, but, he, but, but they have been so bad that they have yet to replace Logan Woodside. He's a cockroach. He can't be killed. We keep saying it. He would survive uh, you know, the, the apocalypse. But the pressure's on Woodside now, and, and I think watching him in in last off or last season's preseason, you kind of saw what you had right there, right? I mean, he's been in the system for long enough. You see what you got. He's a you know he's not a guy who's going to win you the game with his arm or his legs. But in the Titans' offense, again, you just really need to know the system. You need to be able to go through your reads, hand the ball off to Derrick Henry, and you know let your defense do their job. Just don't turn it over. But is is Logan's is Logan Woodside ceiling high enough to be productive in the NFL? You know, taking significant stat snaps as, as a starting quarterback? No, that's why they drafted Malik Willis. If they thought that Logan Woodside can handle his business, if Tannehill is to miss four, five, six games, they would not have gone out and, and drafted Malik Willis. And again, they obviously know that Woodside is not 
the future at the quarterback position. I think the Titans know that they've seen, you know, the peak of Woodside and what he can be and exactly what his talents are. They said, you know what? That's probably not good enough if we're to go away from Tannehill. So let's go out and get Malik Willis. He's a physically gifted quarterback. He's got all the tools, good head on his shoulders. We saw that in rookie minicamp. He's just he's just a better option, not just short term, but long term as well. Well, so that's what we're going to get to. Is he a better option to start? That's so let's go back to why we're talking about what we're talking about. And that is Jim Wyatt's mailbag. Uh, Justin, a Titans fan, asked him about Malik Willis and what they're going to be, do with that position this year. And Jim responded by saying he was impressed with Malik Willis, strong arm, great attitude, but also a work in progress. Tannehill will be the starter in 22. And sitting here typing this in mid-May, Jim writes, I suspect Logan Woodside will be the number two quarterback with Malik being the third quarterback and potentially inactive on game days. Can Malik do enough in the next three to four months to convince his bosses he can be trusted and is ready? We'll see. That's essentially what Jim Wyatt wrote in his mailbag, which I thought was pretty interesting. So the question we are going to pose to you guys, which I think is a pretty good one, what percentage chance does Logan Woodside have of starting the season at QB2. So now you really got to pair what your thought is of the short-term ceiling of Malik Willis and the stability and being able to be around the facility, the coaching staff, the system in Logan Woodside. So let's ask that question to the chat. The question is, what percentage chance does Logan Woodside have of starting the season as QB2? 100 means he's already got the job. One means it's probably going to be Malik Willis. So one to 100, what's your percentage? Before we get to the chat and get to your answers, I do want to tell you guys about a great sponsor of ours, and that is Farm Bureau Health Plans. FBHP.com is where to go to get your new health plan. I got my new health plan at the beginning of this year. I love it. I actually do. I am a living testimony when it comes to better coverage, better rates, and better service. I received better coverage from Farmborough Health Plans from my free previous health plan. I'm saving 20%. Oh, wait, that's a better rate than I used to have. Did I have better service? It, you're damn right. I did because I actually, I emailed with people and I spoke to people. That is not something that I did with my previous health plan. They were su it was super easy. They were very nice. And look, I I have a high expectations. I hold people accountable. I got high expectations, especially with my health plan. They met my expectations, which I absolutely love. That's fbhp.com slash A to Z, 200 plus locations in the state of Tennessee. At the top of the show, Zach mentioned uh, the Heat and Celtics game that went on last night. Well, there's another game going on this evening on the hardwood, which means there's another chance to win $200 through BetMGM. New users, download the BetMGM app, use promo code A to Z200, that's A-T-O-Z200, put $10 on the money line of either Golden State or Dallas, both playing tonight in the Western Conference Finals, put $10 on one of those teams' money line, and that turns into $200 when one three-pointer is made in that contest. Doesn't have to be by the team you bet on. Just You just need one three to turn $10 into $200 with code A to Z200. A T O Z 200 $10 on the money line for either Dallas or Golden State turns into $200 when a single three-pointer is made in tonight's Western Conference Finals. All right, let's head to the chat. The question that we are asking, and I, I think we got a wide range of percentage. And the best part is this is not like big deal, small deal, or no deal. There's not three choices. You There's 100, mm -hmm. literally. So the question is, what percentage chance does Logan Woodside have of starting uh, at QB2 this season? And make sure if you're on YouTube, hit the like button on the video and subscribe to our channel. Let's head to the chat. Dadson says 98%. Chris goes 100 emoji. Chris says there's no shot of Malik Willis being the number two quarterback heading into this football season. Wow. So does Steven. We got two 100s oh. out of the gate. 
Sean Gill says 80. Pauly D says 40. Shannon says 90. Scott says 80. Xavier says 30. Jarrell says 55. So more towards the Woodside than, than Willis, but a lower percentage than others. Eric says 70. 60 to 70 from Jabu, 33.3% from Corey, 75% from Tighten Up. Brandon says 60%, 75% from Ethan Ramsey, 50% from Tighten Up Tido. Derek says 35-ish. He's got to kill it in camp. MB says 70. Devin is a part of our 100 club. Mr. Clean says 50%. Steven says 62.7%. 8%. Guy says 80. Jeff says 40. Nate says 10%. That cat out saying, hey, it's Malik Willis's job. So Nate kind of brings it on the other end of the spectrum compared to 100%. He's at 10. Jared says 45. Scola says 35. Carl is a part of the 100 club. I agree with Woodside being number two, and I'm a Willis guy. Why are they trying to rush Malik Willis? Well, I, Carl, I have some opinion about that as part of the 100 club. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I am not at 100 by any means. I, I think it's actually very difficult to be at 100. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike is going with zero. So you talk about really on the other end. Willis will win over the team. Daniel says five. Andrew says 90. Matt says 55. A lot of really good percentages, and they're still rolling in on our chat. I want to get to Steven real quick. He says he's going hundred club too. a hundred percent is the answer because I think John Robinson and Mike Vrabel are going to defend Logan Woodside despite drafting Malik Willis in round three, Jack, where do you reside on your percentages and why? All right. Well, I saw some of the 100 clubs. I'm not exactly there, but I'm going to go 90% that Woodside opens the season as QB2 for the Tennessee Titans. And this is your classic experience versus education, right? I know, Zach, you, as a guy who hires people, I'm sure you have to make this decision when you have two different guys, one with a little more experience than the other, but the other guy's coming out of a good school. He's got He's got a great resume, but you need them to step in and help you now. Now, we're talking about week one. This is a week one question. So, like I mentioned earlier, Woodside's been with the Titans since really 2018. I know he went to the AAF in 2018 as well, but he, he's qualified, right? He's he's spent a couple seasons behind Tannehill as the backup quarterback. At this point in his career, he knows how to read a defense. He knows how to operate under center. And, you know, it, it's kind of like Woodside, and I don't want to compare this to like a student, but that's kind of where I'm going to go. Because Woodside, you know, he's the guy who made C's in college. He got his degree, C's get degrees. And, you know, ever since coming into the real world, into, into the job force, they've brought in guys to pressure him. They, they, they've brought in different guys to see, hmm, how does this dude stack up against our current option in Logan Woodside? And I mentioned Trevor Simeon, Cole McDonald, Luke Falk. There's, there's a couple other names. Um, but he has beaten them all out. Now, he's less talented than, than Malik Willis, but he's probably more prepared to start week one. Now, Malik Willis, on the other hand, he's coming out of Liberty, and he's got a great resume, was was a really great quarterback in college. A lot of people thought he was the most talented quarterback in this draft class, but he needs some experience at the NFL level. You know, in college at Liberty, he was never forced to operate under center, and his offensive line was so bad last season that I, I, I don't know if he ever got to a second read, right? He's still got He's still got a ways to go and learning how to read defenses, which is so important. At the NFL level, you can have all the skills in the world, but if you can't see what's happening on the other side of the ball, you're in trouble. You know, and Willis, while he has a good resume, it was against lesser competition. And Woodside's had a couple of years at the NFL level. Now he's never taken real snaps in the regular season. But I do think it, since this is a week one question, give me a 90% chance that Logan Woodside starts the season as QB2. Now, I'm not saying that by week 9, week 10, maybe maybe later in the season, week 14, week 15, that Willis doesn't step in. I do think as a Titans fan, and you, you know, even people in the Titans building are probably hoping that he gets to 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 the quarter to the backup quarterback position 
Later well, on, let me ask you here real quick, Jack. If he start, if Logan Woodside starts as the backup quarterback, I mean, what is going to change in week 13 if Tannehill has started all 13 games and or 12 games because of bye, early bye week, but 12 games, what is going to change with inside the building for Logan Woodside to lose that job? Well, it's nothing about Logan. It's not what Logan Woodside can't do or can do. It's about whether or not Malik Willis, your third round draft pick is ready if Tannehill is to go down in a football game. Week one, I don't think Malik Willis can step in and do a good job. I mean, you're asking a lot out of a guy. Remember, this is a dude the Titans took in the third round. They have plans for him down the road, but they don't need to throw him into the fire if Tannehill goes down week one. That's putting your third-round draft pick and potentially you know, the future of your franchise at the quarterback position in a terrible spot. Logan Woodside can win a game if Tannehill is to go down. Now, if Tannehill is to miss more time than that, you hope that Willis could be ready if Woodside is to go down early in the season. But realistically, Malik Willis hopping in the first half of the season to take snaps at the NFL level, that's putting him in a really bad spot. It's unfair for Malik Willis. It's unfair to the Titans. And you know what you have in Logan Woodside. I mean, he's not a guy who's going to you know, win you a playoff game, but he's a dude who can step in and manage a football game, maybe put up 17 points uh, with the help of Derrick Henry and you know, ho uh, hopefully Traylon Burks and Robert Woods and Austin Hooper. So uh, the, the ultimate equalizer, though, here between these two, neither of them have any experience with these receivers that the Titans are going to be throwing to this year, right? And even Tannehill doesn't. Tannehill, <laughs> yeah, I, was about to say, I was about to say nobody I mean, does. Traylon Burks, Austin Hooper, Robert Woods, you got Chickaconquo, really NWI is the only receiver on this roster that's going to play in the regular season that has caught balls from Tannehill or Woodside. So – all of these, you've got to build a rapport throughout the offseason with all of these pass catchers. All right, so you're at 90%. Uh, I think this is a really good question because I think you can go a lot of different directions, right? And I think your direction makes sense. I, I, I do admit that. I think that if Logan Woodside week one, if something, God forbid, happens to Ryan Tannehill, you want to be able to win that game. And Malik Willis throwing him into the fire, you don't want to ruin him, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole process or the, the philosophy of grooming a quarterback. You don't get to groom if you're thrown into the fire. But on the other side of things, you want Malik Willis to win. He's getting the benefit, right? You, you liked him so much to draft a quarterback that high. Now, it wasn't first or second round, but you traded up to get them. Actions speak louder than words, and their actions say they really like Malik Willis enough to draft him and possibly be the future of this franchise. Then you've got the playmaking ability in the preseason. Jack, the caveat is if Logan Woodside comes in there and throws three picks and has a terrible preseason and Malik Willis has an okay preseason, Logan Woodside is not going to be QB2, right? And there's an opportunity for that to happen. There is. Because Tannehill, as a seasoned veteran, is probably going to play less. They, you know, Vrabel, they don't play their starters in preseason that much. So we're going to really get to see Malik Willis and Logan Woodside play. Logan Woodside will be playing against better competition than the Malik Willis will starting out of the gate just because of the hierarchy of where it starts it doesn't mean that's where it's going to end. So I am lower than 90%. I think 90% is too high. I think I'm more at like 60%. 60% that I think the benefit Logan Woodside has, he is the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to QB2 heading into camp. But I think two things are working against him. First, the preseason you're going to really, you can't screw up in the preseason, right? It's more, it's not about thriving. It's not about maintaining. It's not, it's about not messing up because you now have pressure behind you. And I think the number two, which really probably takes the majority of my percentage away, I think the Titans want Malik Willis to be two. When you want somebody to be something, you give them more of a leash, right? You give them more of an opportunity, more of a chance. I'm at 60%. It's Logan Woodside's job to lose, but 
kudos to Jim Wyatt and his mailbag for bringing this up because I think it is a damn good conversation mm -hmm. and a really good competition between two guys heading into this offseason. My biggest worry, you mentioned the preseason a lot. There's three preseason games now. Is that enough time to really figure out Malik Willis? Because you got to remember, Malik Willis isn't going to be going up against the starters uh, on the other side of the football. He's going up against the twos and threes. More likely the threes, right? You want to build confidence heading into you know a regular, a long regular season. It's Logan Woodside just makes more sense. Again, this is week one. I know I agree with you. The Titans are pulling for Malik Willis. They want him to come as come along as quickly as he can. And what do you think? MB brings up a very good point. Shout out to MB. The Titans only have Malik for four years. They didn't draft him in the first round. They don't get a, a, a fifth round option. This process is kind of being expedited from the get to first figure out what Ryan Tannehill can be. Can he lead you to a Super Bowl? Can he win you a Super Bowl? If the answer is no, then you're going to have I mean, you got to figure this thing out about Willis or all of a sudden he's just a backup and goes into like Josh Dobbs and uh, Jake Fromm and and A.J. McCarron territory. Jordan Love, oh yeah. But it's – I know that you're pulling for him from a Titans standpoint, right? You want the guy you drafted in the third round to beat out the UDFA who's had spent time in the AAF and really hasn't done anything that's that impressive at the NFL level. But you also can't force him. You're right. You do have him for four years, but that doesn't mean you need to throw him into the fire in his rookie season, especially after playing against inferior competition in college, after playing in a spread offense where he doesn't operate under center. Obviously, the Titans offense and Titans system is the total opposite of that. You're going to be under center more often than not because you've got the king behind you. So it's more than just the physical attributes that Willis brings to the table. Right, it's the mental game. You can't step into the NFL, step into a huddle, and get your teammates to respect you and believe in you when you know you you haven't been performing in practice. And I'm not saying he's not going to be good in practice. I loved what I saw and what I heard out of Willis at rookie minicamp, but to, to to throw him into the fire week one or even you know in the first half of the season, that's putting him in a bad spot. You've got Logan Woodside for a reason. You can carry three quarterbacks now. You don't want to put Malik Willis on the practice squad because other teams can swoop in and grab him, but yeah, they're think, not going to do that. I mean, I they're going to protect you, you. You carry three quarterbacks. That's what you do. You carry three quarterbacks. You wait for Willis to be ready. You don't force him to get ready. You wait for him to come along. And Todd Downing and Tim Kelly will be there to do that. And Pat O'Hara, QB coach, they'll be there to do that. They'll they'll tell Vrabel. And they'll they tell couldn't Tom afford Robinson. that roster spot last year. They were using that roster spot like they were hang clinging on for dear life well, because of all their injuries. So what do you do? Do you cut Woodside and then just have a Willis with not a single snap of experience behind? Last him? year, Woodside would have been cut. Do you do you really think so? Yes, because you're not going to cut Malik Willis. And look how much roster movement they had with all their injuries. You can't John Robinson was him. was praying for more roster spots. You, you can't keep either of the – or you can't cut either of those guys, right? Because you drafted – I'm talking about in last player. year's scenario. Last year's scenario. And, you, and, again, you hope that doesn't repeat, and I think that was an anomaly with all the injuries that accrued, occurred. But, like, you want Malik Willis to be number two. You want to see – and, look, I think this – you know, Malik Willis has one highlight play in the preseason. Fans are going to be drooling. I mean, yes, that's how it they works. are. And, and, and he has town? that ability. Logan Woodside doesn't have that ability. More likely, Logan Woodside is a game manager that your praying doesn't throw an interception. Yeah, it's it's no mistakes from Woodside, right? But again, what's what's the point in rushing Malik Willis into QB two this year when you didn't draft him to contribute or really to be? you know, a potential impact player. And I know the QB two is not, not, hadn't been an impact player in Tennessee for quite a while, but injuries do happen. You mentioned it. Injuries are guaranteed in football. Now, not to every single player, every single season, but it's, it's definitely a probability. There's going to be injuries on both sides of the football this year. Titans had terrible luck in the injury department last year. Malik Willis has to be, and will be the QB two heading into next season. Logan Woodside will probably not be on this roster heading into next season, but Again, this is his first season with the Titans. He's got a few months to develop, a few months to learn the system. 
if they if they're confident that he can step in there, if Tannehill's to go down, then sure, put him as a backup week two. Cut ties with Logan Woodside. That's not what they're going to do though. They've got to. All take right, I'm going to give Malik you a Willis. scenario. Uh, this is a, That's the move with Malik Willis. Okay, I'm going to give you a somewhat irrational scenario, but it could happen. This is ifs and buts, beer and nuts, presented by AZ Sports. <laughs> what if the Titans start seven and two? So you're nine games in. You're halfway through the season. Tannehill goes down. You're seven and two, though. Are you going to play Woodside, or are you going to throw Malik Willis out there to actually kind of reign supreme and see if he can win and take the franchise spot? So I, that's my that's my unrealistic hypothetical ifs and buts beer and nuts scenario presented by A to Z Sports. Don't answer that. Think about it. What do you do? Titans are seven and question. two, and Tannehill goes down. I and, love this question. Right, and, and Tannehill is out for a number of weeks. It's not just one week. So, foreseeable future, indefinitely, as they say. Right. So we don't know. So that's the that's the hypothetical. This is on the fly. A to Z Sports. Think about that, Jack. We'll also read some comments. But first, I do want to tell you guys. If Tannehill, if that does happen, I know exactly where he can go. He can go to the Bone and Joint Institute and get healed up. So, you know, that decision is left less impactful for the fo football team. Don't fumble on your recovery. Go to the Bone and Joint Institute, state-of-the-art facility down there in Franklin, plus satellite locations all across Middle Tennessee. The Bone and Joint Institute has helped a to Z sports in numerous ways. They fixed Austin's ACL that was torn. One of their specialists and doctors, one of their doctors fixed my shoulder. I'd still be in a sling. I'd still be droop. My, my shoulder be drooping down 10 years ago if it wasn't for Dr. Thomas. But that's why we trust the doctors at bone and joint Institute. They've got physical therapists that will help you recover. I mean, it truly is a full circle from injury all the way to full health right there at the Bone and Joint Institute. Visit them for your injury concerns. You mentioned the word trust. You need a sports book you can trust as a sports better. BetMGM is exactly that. New users, you can download the BetMGM app today. And with the Western Conference Finals in action tonight between the Golden State Warriors and the Dallas Mavericks, if you put a $10 money line wager on either of those teams, that turns into $200 when one single three-pointer is made with promo code A to Z200. A-T-O-Z-200. Put a $10 money line wager on either the Mavs or the Warriors, and that turns into $200 when a single three-pointer is made. And with Luka Doncic, Steph Curry, and Klay Thompson, that's a free $200, folks. Nobody else is doing this. Download the BetMGM app. Don't forget that promo code upon sign-up, A to Z200. A to Z Sports. We are powered by BetMGM. Jack. My hypothetical scenario, ifs and buts, beers and nuts, if Titans start seven and two, Tannehill goes down for eight weeks, right? So he's out for the remainder of the regular season. What are you going to do? Your quarterback situation has now shaken up, right? Is Woodside, I mean, you're now in a playoff push against a rabid AFC. You've got Herbert, Mahomes, Allen, Carr, Wilson now, not to mention the Patriots and Bill Belichick. Tua's throwing to speedsters, the Cheetah and Waddle down the sidelines. The Jets are trying to start up their engines, even though they're probably out of gas. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about Lamar Jackson and Matty Ice within your own division. And who's, who knows what what uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be? Hell, I just named most of the AFC, mm -hmm. all with an opportunity to make some waves. What do you do in that scenario at your backup quarterback spot? So you're saying the Titans start seven and two. They've, they've got the bye week in week six. So this would put them at week 11 in the season. So week 11 in the season, Tannehill's to miss the rest of the regular season. Who do they go with? Here's what you do. And Titans fans, bear with me here. You start Logan Woodside for that first game. You start Logan Woodside for that first game. Malik Willis, this is a wake-up call. Hey, man, like this is the real deal. We're going to need you at any moment. You're one snap away. So depending on how that game goes, they'll probably lose with Logan Woodside. 
Then the Malik Willis conversation starts to happen. Then Let's see what, what game would that be? Week 11? Ooh. Oh, sure. <laughs> even, even more so Woodside because of the short rest, right? But that's Green Bay. And for all those people that can't see, it's at Green Bay, Amazon primetime. Get your Bezos ready. Here's what you got, though. Since that's a Thursday night game and Woodside's going to go on Thursday night, you've got 10 days for the Bengals. Can Malik Willis get ready in 10 days for the Bengals? Maybe he can. Look, this is this is that would be 12 weeks in the season. Okay. That's that's essentially six months from now. So I I, I think I think you go Willis if as soon as Woodside loses that first one. So you you are Woodside short lease Willis. If it's yes, Woodside very short leash with extra rest coming off a bad loss to Green Bay. I think you turn it over to Willis against the Bengals. Interesting. Um, uh, you know, obviously that was a crazy hypothetical and really that depends on those two play within camp and, you know, the Titans, at least they have experienced, you know, what you don't want, right? When you get older, I think the biggest thing in life that you learn is what you don't like, right? I don't like this. I don't like that. They know they don't want Cole McDonald or Luke Falk. They know what type of backup quarterback they don't want. So they're going to, I think, be able to see Malik Willis compared to those failures. Let's just call them what they are and see who Malik Willis is. I mean, what kind of fireworks would that be Thursday night on prime time when you throw Malik Willis out there, though? Can't do that. I don't know. You I, got you got three days to prepare and then a travel day. Yeah, but you only have four years. That's fine. That's fine. You don't have to make magic in year one. That's not a requirement. Just because you only have four years, and it's not a guarantee that he leaves after four. If the Titans like what they see, they'll they'll ink him to a second deal. So the four years thing, that that's kind of that doesn't make a ton of sense to me right now. But look, you don't start him on short rest. You you ride with Woodside. And if Woodside plays particularly bad, then you go with Willis. If Woodside can hold the wall, keep it close by the fourth quarter, he may get another game to prove it to uh, prove it to the Titans that hey, you can trust me. I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'll throw for 175 and hand the ball off to Derrick Henry 30 times. But again, if Woodside comes in, looks terrible, can't adjust to the, to you know playing against starters in the NFL, then I, maybe you turn it over to Woodside or Willis. Excuse me. You don't want to put too much pressure on Willis, but if that if the Titans were in position at seven and two to make a run in the playoffs, I think you need to know what you have in each guy to make a decision for the postseason. Now, if they start two and seven, that same situation applies. I think you can you can put more. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's flip it. I, I love it. I love it. Flip it. It's two and seven. I mean, do you just keep destroying Tannehill's career? <laughs> No, no. So Tannehill goes down at two and seven, right? Or is Tannehill healthy at this point? Let's well, if that. Tannehill's two and seven, something else has happened. If the Titans are two and seven and Tannehill's still the quarterback and he's healthy, I, I don't think that you can do that. I think this expedites Willis getting playing time. Uh, yes, I, I agree with you. I think if the Titans were to go in the tank rather than, you know, to go seven and two, that would be more likely to see Malillis or see Malik Willis as, as QB one, right? Mo Willis. That Mo Willis. could be a new thing. Maybe we call him Mo Willis, but um, I love music city Malik. That's a good. I, I, I do love that nickname. So look two and seven Titans are done. Their season's over. Tannehill is, is pretty much out. And if you, if he starts two and seven, he's not going to be here next year. So what do you do? You get your you get your QB two ready. You, at that point, you throw him into the fire because you know you're moving on from Tannehill next year. You got to know what you have in Malik Willis because number one, you got to prepare for the NFL draft. We saw with the Patriots, even though they had Mac Jones, they drafted Mac Jones last year. They turned around and found Bailey Zappi out of Western Kentucky in the third round. Having Malik Willis on the roster does not, you know, remove the possibility that the Titans start to draft a quarterback next year. You, you need to know Malik Willis heading into next offseason to make you know this informed decision on how to address the QB position further because you know even if Tannehill plays well well he's still probably got one year left in Tennessee 
this is pretty wild, and you know we're we're getting way out there. But Scott says if the Titans go in the tank, this they're taking a, a quarterback guarantee. Can you do that after taking Willis in the yes. third round? Yes, you can because he's a late third round pick. There, there isn't yeah, as much I mean, pressure I think on you Willis. Have to. Right you you got to get somebody who can come in there and compete. But what if? What, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you know the answer is not Tannehill, you got to get a couple more multiple choice options, right? If you know the answer is not A. You need more choices. Yeah, you but need you a, don't you want a, a first and a third round pick that are one and two year players at the same position. You've, you've really messed up the roster. Well, yeah, you, you certainly have. But again, <laughs> you, you're, important, you're waste, you've wasted a lot most, of picks. The most important position in the NFL is the quarterback position. You've got to make sure you have that figured out. And Zach has left. Um, Zach will be back here in a minute, but I, as you can't really see my face, I'll move over. Hey guys, there's Zach. He's coming back in. Oh, they, see that just blew my mind. I, I, I exited the room thinking about, so I, we've gone too much down. I went to the rabbit hole. That's probably I, a sign, right? Right. And I came back. So let's move on. And you know, something that is pretty interesting that I saw yesterday on NFL live that I wanted to pull and, and, bring to fruition with which is look I, I didn't get an opportunity to react to the schedule because I was out of town but I think this gives an opportunity to react but also to ask a very good question Dan Orlovsky went on NFL live yesterday and courtesy ESPN we're about to show the video of him predicting the Titans schedule and the Colts schedule we're going to play this video and then react on the other side of it. I think we've got a good question as we diagnose, and I want to hear what the fans have to say about what Orlovsky had to say about these two AFC South teams. And we're going to start with Tennessee. I'm going to start quickly with Tennessee. I'm going to go, okay, week one, you're going to beat the Giants. Okay. You go on the road to Buffalo, lose. Top one. I'm going to say you football. beat the Raiders, though, at home. Go on the road, divisional opponent against the Colts, okay. and lose and get the Commanders okay. on a win. Then you got so your far. bye, right? Yep. At home, I'm going to say you beat the Colts, yep. you beat the Texans. Okay. Now, I want to finish the season before I get to the meat of it. The, the, the last three games, I'm going to go win, win, win. So right now, you're sitting eight and two out of those ten games, and Feels you feel good, great. Right? Dude, there is a brutal seven-game stretch in really the heart of their season. Okay. At the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a tough one. I'm going to say that's a loss. Broncos, I'm going to say that's a loss. Tough. At Green Bay, yeah. I'm going to say that's a loss. Yeah. Cincinnati, I'm going to say that's a loss. At the Eagles is like a very swing point to me. I'm going to give the Jaguars game a win. So right now, you sit at 9-6, and six, okay. and these two games are going to determine if they get into the playoffs or not. I think that they go to the Chargers and lose. I think this game really determines their season, whether they win or get in. Yeah, feels I'm like going it. to give them a win against the Philadelphia Eagles to get to 10 and 7. I could very easily see this team getting to like 8 and 9 or 9 and 8. All That's right. a generous 10 and 7. That seven game stretch is brutal. Yeah, you know, the thing, I think they're probably t Titans fans and Titans players out there saying, dude, we had everything go wrong for us injury wise last year, and we still have the number one seed of the AFC. They found ways to win, but it won't be easy this upcoming year. Let's right. go to Indianapolis. And this is a team that it feels like they've been in the division mix for a while, but okay. they haven't won since 2014. How yeah. do they do it this year? Well, I, I'm going to go on the road at Houston and say, let's okay. get a win. Okay, then at the road strong. to the Jaguars, naturally you go win. No. I, I, I learned a lesson from week 17 last year. I'm going to wow. say that's a loss on the road versus the Chiefs. Okay. I'm going to give a loss versus the Titans at home. We had played that in as a win. You yeah. go on the road versus Denver. Okay. I think Denver's going to be very good. That's a loss. You come home, get back to 500 with a win versus Jacksonville. But then you go down to Tennessee and lose. Um, and then you're going to play the Commanders. I'm going to say win versus the Commanders. Now the next stretch, I'm going to leave blank all the way up until the bye week. Okay. I go at the Vikings to end the season. I say loss. I'm saying this is going to be a great game, and they're going to win that game at home on the road versus the Giants and then the Texans. So, again, you sit at 7-5. and five. Not bad. Here's the heart of that season yep. that is going to determine if they actually can get into the playoffs. That is good. I'm going to say on the road at New England, they're going to get a win because Huge. they're a physical group. Okay. On the road versus the Raiders, I'm going to say loss. I'm going to say you beat Philadelphia because you're at home. You beat the Steelers. You get to 10-6. and six. I'm going to say at the Dallas Cowboys, I'm going to – and this pains me. I'm going to say they go on the road versus Dallas and actually lose that game because I expect Dallas' speed to be a big determining factor. But, again, sitting at 10-7, and seven, I could very easily see this being an 11-win football team. Wow, so there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. 
Uh, but Orlovsky, Orlovsky essentially has the Titans and the Colts at 10 and 7, which would be a tie. But it looks like, as I was trying to do math there, because he picked the Jags to beat the Colts, the Titans would win that tie break. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. I noticed that as well. So, you know, Orlovsky, while, while a lot of things he says are, are clownish at times because he tries to – Orlovsky is the type of guy, he likes to kiss up to these players to get invited to players' dinners and, <laughs> and you know, to be in the back pocket of some of, some of the NFL – um elite guys even though Carson Wentz has fallen off I think he's he picked against the commanders twice so the Carson Wentz train has left the station for Mr. Dan O but um yeah 10 and 7 10 and 7 is f- fair right I think you could probably mix around some of the games the wins and losses that he had 10 and 7 is fair I think 11 and 6 it's going to be one of those two for the Titans if everybody stays healthy and we learned last year that that's no guarantee right I think you'd take 10 and 7 wouldn't you you take ten and seven. Would you take ten and ten and seven for the Titans right now? I think you get in the playoffs with ten and seven. So y- yeah, you get in the playoffs. Anything can happen. Uh, and if you don't have the buy, then you, the Titans aren't going to have the buy this year. They they had their shot last year with the buy. They had it. They blew it. They're not going to have the buy again. It's too hard to get, especially with these quarterbacks now in the in the AFC. But you get in the playoffs. You win the division like Orlovsky had them doing. You get a home game. Uh, you, I think you absolutely. Whenever, whenever you can take a home game in the playoffs, I'm pressing deal. I'm saying Howie Mandel, I want to make that deal. Jack, the Titans don't like home games in the playoffs. They've lost the last two years. I'd rather be playing at home than on the road, even with the Titans' track record recently. They don't win home games. <laughs> they lose to the Ravens. And they the lose Bengals. to the Bengals. Yeah. They lose to the Ravens again previously. <laughs> they they don't win home games. <laughs> like I, I'm I hate to say it, but that's what it is. That's not how you get to a Super Bowl. But I mean, the fact of the matter is they're they're gonna probably be wearing that badge that they wore a couple of years ago with their AFC championship run, which is it's us against the world, like kind of like the Bengals did la- this past year, right? Is you're gonna have to make this run. Look, 10 and 7 does make sense. I could see that because he gave room for error. He gave losses. And, Jack, just quickly, what did you think about the Titans' schedule overall? I mean, I, I'll i say this. I actually was subtly surprised. I liked it. I thought that they were going to destroy the Titans. And, look, that seven-game stretch is that seven-game stretch. But they were going to have that seven-game stretch somewhere and it it's better that it's not it's in the middle instead of at the beginning or at the end because at the end you lose games you wind up being the Miami Dolphins and miss the playoffs every year if you're at the beginning you you don't have the horses to come back in this AFC so i liked what they did with the titan schedule i like opening against the giants at home i think that's a good spot to be in yeah. right I think it also brings us to our next question, which is what is the toughest two-game stretch in the Titans season? So what is the toughest two-game stretch in the Titans season? We're going to go through, and here, just for reference, we'll give a little bit of time for the the people uh, to give a visual so they can kind of look through and see what is the toughest two game, not three game, two game, back to back game, most impactful? We'll put that in the comment section in the chat. We'll revisit this schedule. But first, I do want to tell you guys about Wilson County Hyundai. Wilson County Hyundai is where you need to go to get your next ride. WilsonCountyHyundai.com. They've got the perfect make and model for you, whether it's the Palisade, the Sonata, the Elantra, the Ionic, which is battery powered. It does not use gas, so you don't have to go to the gas station and get absolutely reamed at the gas station. It's battery powered. But for all of their fuel efficient cars, they've got them at a great pl- a price. Payne Bone and his team will hook you up. Family owned and operated. WilsonCountyHyundai.com. Bet MGM will also hook you up, especially with the promo code A to Z 200. New users, download the Bet MGM app. Use that code I just mentioned, ATOZ 200. 
Put a $10 money line wager on either NBA team in action tonight. You've got the Warriors and the Mavs. Put a $10 money line wager on either of those teams, and that turns into $200 when one three-pointer is made in that game. One three-pointer will be made within the first minute of that game. That's a free $200. Use code A to Z200. Turn that $10 money line wager into $200 as soon as one three-pointer is made in that game tonight. There you go. Bet MGM. Make sure that uh, you log on, download the app, and if you do have a gambling problem, call or text the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Uh, got a lot of, uh, of bets out with Major League Baseball and the NBA and uh, the NHL, even the playoffs oh, yeah. are heating up. So uh, download the app today. All right, Jack. Toughest two-game stretch in the Titans season. We will go to the chat because it's the toughest, as we disclosed, right? It's not just the best, the most formidable, the easiest. It is the toughest, in your opinion, in the preseason. I'm going to read some chat and then get your answer ready. Jamal says, uh, he starts out with Denver and Green Bay right out of the gates. Chiefs and Broncos from Stacy. Broncos and Green Bay. Denver and Green Bay. Chiefs and Broncos from Yannick. Broncos and Raiders. Oh, I don't think that's a two-game that, stretch, though. That's Paul. not a two-game stretch. A stretch is back-to-back -back games. It's mm -hmm. not just two games. So, stretch. Um, let's see. Chiefs and Broncos, two AFC games. Packers, Bengals from Josh Brown. Broncos, Packers, um, Raiders, Colts from Thaddeus. That's a new one. Okay. Packers, Bengals from Omar. Bills, Raiders from Ramon. Uh, Green Bay, Cincy from Alejandro. Bills, Raiders from Jake. Packers, Broncos from Max. Denver, Denver versus uh, Green Bay from Jessica. We've got uh, Chiefs, Broncos from Demetrius. Chiefs Broncos from Jay Packers Bengals from Jake Green Bay Bengals from Steve Jack where are you on this I'll put the schedule up as more comments roll in the question is what is the toughest two game stretch two games back to back of this Titans season it's important to emphasize toughest right not the most important two game stretch I think the most important two-game stretch is probably Week 9 at Kansas City and Week 10 at Denver because they're both in the AFC. You need to bolster your AFC record as much as you can. The toughest two-game stretch is Denver and Green Bay. Why? Well, you're coming off a Sunday night football game in Kansas City in prime time. you got to turn around. The Broncos come to town. It's nice that they're at home, but that Broncos team is going to be coming in hot. And the Titans, you know, may, may, come, may be coming out of a bloodbath against the Chiefs. Some of those games with, between the Titans and the Chiefs come down to the wire. Not only are they physically exhausting, but they're mentally and emotionally exhausting as well. So the Titans won't have any time to be licking their wounds heading into Week 10 against the Broncos at home. And then you have the quick turnaround in Green Bay. Going to Green Bay is hard, even with, with full a full week of rest. The Titans struggled in Green Bay the last time they were there in the snow game. Week 11, who knows? The snow may be coming down. But to have three days to prepare for Aaron Rodgers is difficult. And I know that Green Bay lost its biggest weapon in Devonta Adams. But going on the road in Green Bay and winning is very difficult to do, especially with Aaron Rodgers still there, even though he is coming up on his 50th birthday. Um, so for me, the toughest two-game stretch is bouncing back after KC. You, you get Denver at home, and then you got short rest against the Packers. The reason why it's not the Packers and the Bengals is because you get that 10 days in between before you got to go see Cincinnati and Joe Burrow. I think that's a fair assessment. I, I The reasoning makes sense. I don't necessarily uh, agree with it. I, I think my two that I was looking at were between Bill's Raiders beginning of the season, and I think that's probably where I'm going to go, is because short week at Buffalo, the Bill's – are good and you catch them early i don't actually think that that's a benefit for the bills i think the bills have kind of come into their own where they know who they are they have their identity their quarterback their wide receivers their defense their head coach 
the Raiders now, you talked about Green Bay, no Devontae Adams. Oop, I'm going to pluck that in to Las Vegas <laughs> with all of the weapons they have. The toughest two-game stretch on a short week is the Bills and the Raiders. Also, because you know who follows that game? The Indianapolis Colts, mm -hmm. right? And you don't want to look past the Raiders to the Colts because you know the impact that that can have on the division. So I actually go early in the season and say at Buffalo, short week against Las Vegas because Las Vegas is a playoff team. Derek Carr played well last year, especially at the end. I mean, at the end of the season, Derek Carr played well. He didn't play great, but now you have Devontae Adams. Your defense is much better. Josh Jacobs is uh, damn good. Hunter Renfro has emerged as this like subtle badass. I mean, call it like you see it. So I, I think that the toughest stretch is actually at the beginning of the season because I go to the, and don't get me wrong, Kansas City and, and Denver, 9 and 10 was probably the other route that I was going to go. I thought you brought up good points with the Green Bay, but short week early on. Plus, Burks is new. Hooper is new. Woods not necessarily have is could not be full strength with his ACL. Caleb Farley is not going to be full strength with his ACL. I lean more towards the beginning of the season as toughest because I categorize toughest on different levels. Competition, short week, team following that tough game against uh, Las Vegas, and the state of your roster. The state of your roster going into the season, I know you can get injured later on, which makes it even more difficult, but going in, I just named Burks as a rookie, Hooper's first season, which is a big thing. Rood, Woods is coming off of an ACL and Caleb Farley coming off of an ACL. And there's question marks at the in the offensive line. So to get all of those right by that time, you make a good case. I, I like your case. However, the only reason I, I'm going where I went is because of the quarterback play, right? Uh, Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, to me, are better than Derek Carr, or excuse me, Josh Allen and Derek Carr. I, I, I would agree with that. So that I'm just putting more emphasis on uh, the quarterbacks that the Titans will be facing and obviously the rest. That Thursday night game, it's never easy to play on the road on a Thursday. But, you know, both teams will be coming off the same amount of rest. Both teams are going to be coming off, you know, short rest in Green Bay. So the Titans, it's not like the Titans don't have a shot there. Will the Broncos have Jerry Judy? Yes, they'll have Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is not catching a 10-game suspension. Okay. <laughs> 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 this league you never know <laughs> no but i you know you where will green bay be i think green bay is is kind of out of flux because this is going to be a tough year for the packers I, I, it's just not the same yeah. team no you're totally right they, they've got to figure it out on the fly poor aaron Rodgers. i'm not gonna say poor aaron Rodgers, but you know they they put nothing nothing around him i get it you got and get the kid from north dakota state in the draft but he's not going to replace Devontae Adams. I mean, it, it's it's they're not the same team there. But again, remember when the Titans played them last? It wasn't Rodgers and the passing game that killed him. AJ Dillon ran all over him in the snow. So it's they they can hurt you in multiple different ways. And with Aaron Jones back there, he's hard to he's hard to cover in the backfield. Whether they swing it out to him or or they run it up the gut with AJ Dillon, who emerged late last season. Uh, the Packers are still to be respected, and playing in Lambeau is one of the toughest places to play in the NFL. And as long as Rodgers is there, that's a scary matchup. Yeah, well, I think that's fair. I, I think uh, both both stretches are tough. We'll see how they fare. But I think at the beginning of the season, the, the NFL schedule, they could have really wrecked the Titans early, and they didn't by by giving them you know, the commanders – even the Colts early because Matt Ryan is on a new team, the Texans, the Giants opening up. So they got before they start their their tough stretch, I still think that they'll they can be okay and in the hunt and and possibly leading the AFC South at that time before they face Kansas City. Yeah, and pull that schedule one more time. Um there are only 
two occasions where the Titans have to go on the road in back-to-back weeks. Indianapolis, but then you get the Commanders. And then week eight, week nine, you, you get the Texans before you go to the Chiefs. So uh, there's going to be a home game mixed in this toughest two-week schedule because of the you know back-to-back games on the road coming against at least one inferior opponent. Well, and the weird thing, at Jacksonville to end the season, usually it's always Houston, right? So this is a new thing at the end of the season. I was, I, I thought maybe that they were going to do Colts Titans at the end of the season this year. Uh, but they still haven't done that. They've still kind of paired them against easier competition at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, the last time they did Colts Titans is last week of the regular season. It turned out to be Andrew Luck versus Blaine Gabbert. So I can't necessarily blame them for that, but it was a playing game. It was, it was, um, all right, let's get to it's Wednesday. You know what that means, Jack, don't you throwing shade, baby. Time to throw some shade, throw some shade in the comment section, whatever you have. This is a time to put everything on the table and say, screw this guy, or I hated this, or I can't stand it. I mean, you, there's so many different things. It could be in your personal life. It could be uh, something you saw on the internet, something you watched, something you experienced. Who knows? But it is throwing shade day. Comment in the comment section for your shade. My tease was a sick doctor, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but makes perfect sense to where I'm going with this. Uh, Jack, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? I'm excited to hear yours. You lead off today. All right. As more shade comes in we'll read those after i get to mine i watched something last night that was very disturbing very disturbing it is a netflix documentary called our father and here is the shade i'm throwing on this loser <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? That is Dr. Donald Klein. And I'll let this image sink in, Jack. So this documentary on Netflix, which I would recommend watching because it's so messed up, is a fertility doctor in the 1980s that was using his own specimen to impregnate women that were struggling to get pregnant. (laughs) He has... That's bad. I shouldn't be laughing. ...reported 94 kids. 94. Because he was using donors. He was saying and telling these women he was using donors, but really he was using his own specimen to impregnate these women and how they found out. And this is the the short story. If anybody wants to watch it, you know, 23 and me ousted this MFR because 23 and me rolled around and all of a sudden, you know, Julie goes on 23 and me. Hey, I want to find my dad. Oh wait, I have seven brothers. Oh wait, I've got five sisters. And then You know, as more people did that, more siblings came around. The messed up part is they all live in the same area. So they have to be very cognizant of who their children date so they don't go incest accidentally. That is bizarre. Which state did this happen in? Uh, Indiana. Indiana. Okay. That makes sense because I feel like a lot of. Uh, I feel like there's only like four types of people from Indiana. So now, now that I'm putting it together. And the crazy part is, is they show them. I mean, it's a documentary. So they interviewed the kids. One of the sons looks just like this guy, <laughs> just like him. But he had no idea that he was his dad because, you know, it was just one of those things of like, Hey mom, did you have trouble having me? And he's like, Oh yeah, your dad uh, had trouble, but we went to a fraternity clinic and you know, uh, it, you know, basically artificially inseminated, and we had you. And imagine telling the father, "Hey, you know, little Jacob is not your son. 
after 25 years of raising him as your own. The that psychological was, damage. Man, more, more, Dr. Morey has to be kicking himself. What a season that would have been, right? And Nick, Nick asked a good question. Maybe Buck's one of his children. Who knows? That's, that's a good Nick. And love then, of the show right there. Doing, <laughs> Nick, you're getting a love of the show for doing some investigative journalism. Maybe Buck is Dr. Klein. You never know. <laughs> that's a great shade. That, that's a deserved shade. And his neck beard deserves shade as well. I mean, look at this neck, neck beard. Oh. It goes all the way down. Mm, it's ugly. I, I mean, those kids, those poor kids probably don't have the best looking. Uh, they, they're probably not, you know. And, Oh, Bless well, with the best genetics. I, I won't ruin it. I will not tell you how it turns out. That, that you know, no spoilers. You get you'll go watch it on Netflix, and you can. It's an hour and a half, so it's like it's not one of those you know, eight episode documentaries. It's just a movie that is a singular documentary. But take a look at it. That is my shade. That's a good shade. Um, before I get to mine, I want to address this one, uh, shade on Nathan McKinnon, um, for the Titans BS controversy on Twitter. That was a fake account. I've seen multiple replies in this, in this chat. That was a fake account. The dude has 200 followers. I mean, excuse me, 200 tweets and 400 followers. You guys got played. Um, okay. So here's my shade. I almost went Patrick Beverly. I hate Pat Bev, Zach. I don't know how you feel about him, but the way he carried himself this, this past week, just slandering the hell out of Chris Paul. It was impressive the effort he 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 put in for it, but it was also embarrassing. But that's not where I'm going. But I had to get that out. This is kind of a double shade. My actual shade is when the bench is clear in the MLB. This pisses me off more than anything. I saw it the other day. Uh, it could have been yesterday. Wilson Contreras and Daniel Vogelback. Right there was a play at the plate. Wilson Contreras tagged this guy pretty hard and. They got in a little, they just started yelling at each other from close up. Then everybody from the bullpen jumps the wall. They come running. And every single time when the bench is clear in baseball, there isn't one punch thrown. You've got all these people on the field. This argument is so big that people have to sprint from the outfield to come get in the middle of. I need to see some action. Somebody needs to get hit in the face, man. I'm tired of seeing this pushy, pushy, you know, huggy, huggy type of a, a brawl, a bench is clearing brawl. Where are the good old days when Nolan Ryan put uh, Robin Ventura in a headlock and beat his brains in. I mean, come on. When's the last time you've seen a benches clearing brawl at the MLB level? It was actually entertaining. It pisses me off every time I see it, whether somebody gets hit by a baseball, nobody's about that action. Nobody wants that smoke in the MLB. So that's my shade. I, I, I agree with that. And plus it creates more rivalries, right? You know, when you get into the playoffs and, whoever it is, these two teams don't like each other. And then they show repeat clips during the playoff game of all the brawls they had. That would be great. Like but Jose Batista, Runet Odor, when Batista bat flipped the Rangers in the playoffs. And then uh, he was coming into second base and Odor just socked him right in the, in the kisser. I mean, give me some more of that. <laughs> Ethan Ramsey, you're right. I want to see some blood on the diamond. Come on, baseball, fix it. I agree. Let's go to the chat real quick before we get out of here. Jeff Rubel says, Shade on Bama fans crying about their big game versus Texas being a noon kickoff. Welcome to Big Noon Fox. <laughs> 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 Jeff, Big Noon Fox, gross. I would be, I, I'm, I'm actually support the SEC here, which is surprise, surprise. Ohio State has had to deal with it for years with our best games being at noon, Crimea River. Yeah, that's because your conference blows, bro. <laughs> that's why Big Ten, Jeff, you know it. Ohio State doesn't suck, but nobody wants to see Rutgers play Nebraska at noon. Give me a bullet at breakfast. That's what it is. So, uh, look, we're, uh, SEC is about that 2.30 life, bra, not big noon kickoff. <laughs> God. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of seeing Wisconsin, Iowa end up in a 13 to seven football game, right? Gross. I, I don't like watching. I don't like what anybody besides Ohio State. It's miserable to watch in the Big Ten. It's a bad brand, bad right. conference. You're right. Jake, you says throwing shade at Amber Heard. He says gears. I think he got autocorrected uh, for screwing up Johnny Depp. I've been following that uh, that trial. That is and man, has it been entertaining? That is bizarre. Right? One of my favorite lines is the prosecutor to Johnny Depp is sitting here and saying 
so you got drunk that Saturday night, and uh, and Johnny Depp goes, "Were you there?" <laughs> Which is such a great line, such a great line. Like to do that to a lawyer is and. The uh, the prosecutor against Amber Heard's uh, destroying her life, which is great. Oh, I mean, I, again, the in and out. It's been very entertaining. Yeah, um, we got some Nathan McKinnon shade. Uh, Nick says throwing shade at NHL playoff game time slots. They last three hours, not two and a half. Uh, there you go. There, they Mike says throwing shade on these Willis haters. Kid has a great head on his shoulders. I think that he does, Mike, but he needs some time to grow as well. Jarrell says shade on the guy in Buffalo tragic. I absolutely oh, agree wow. with that shade on that MF -er. Uh, there's no room for that. And th the reason behind it, uh, is, is even worse. And so, you know, mass shootings in general make me so angry, like so angry. There's no reason for that. That guy, uh, we, I don't even want to go into what I believe should happen to that individual. So we'll move on, but shade on that guy. Uh, Lucas informs us that his cat, his name is Shade. Um, Eric like says, it. shade on his girlfriend snoring. Shut up. I'm trying to sleep. Oh, well, Eric, that'll get you in trouble, man. You better hope she's not watching. Tough coming from a guy that snores. So yeah, I don't can't that. call the... I can't can't do that. Uh, uh, Eric also another Eric says shade on everyone who's not starting their hump day with a positive attitude and ruining other people's day. <laughs> there you go. Um, positive vibes only, Eric. I like it. Yep, yeah, PVOs as we say. PVOs. We got a lot of uh, freaks. All right, um, let's see here. Malachi says throwing shade at my local dealership charged me $150 to look at my radio, but did a full scale review of my car for free so they could find other things for them to spend money on. If they are going to do a review anyway, why did I pay the $150? I didn't ask them to do it. Just wanted my radio looked at that is welcome to, you know, mechanics. Yeah. That's look, Payne bone and his team at Wilson County Hyundai. will take care of you. Uh, I do know that they've taken, they've taken care of me before. Um, let's see. Shade, shade, shade. And Jonathan brings this up. We may talk about this tomorrow, Jonathan, because I have this in the holster. Shade on one reporter who said Henry is toast in one to two years. LOL. That may be a topic for Titans Thursday tomorrow. So perfect way to wrap up, Jonathan. Thank you for that. Shade day, check. I thought it was a great show, Jack. We've uh, enjoyed these these conversations and discussions we've had over the last three days. Um, done a great job. Your your final opportunity uh, for this week to promote the Tighten Up podcast. Yes. Oh, yes. If you guys listen to the Tighten Up podcast and you have been listening for over a year, you know how fun this episode is. We just released it at midnight last night. It's everyone's least favorite sports talk radio segment, right? P predicting the Titan schedule game by game. Going down the schedule, 17 games and predicting where they're going to win and where, gonna, where they're going to lose. We make fun of this every year. You're going to hear me and Austin come up with our own predictions for the Titans' regular season. We also get to some of the drama at rookie uh, minicamp. Traylon Burks had to leave early. We talked about it earlier in the week. Uh, Zach, you and I did. And then, of course, how Malik Willis impressed um, on the microphone as well as on the field at rookie minicamp. So a lot to get to. A.J. Brown, if you stick towards the end, A.J. Brown uh, had a couple tweets where he subtweeted the Titans and even tweeted Mason Kinsey. Um, so stick around for that. It's a really fun episode. You guys will enjoy it. Um, as always, subscribe, rate, and review. Five star or four and a half stars for the Tighten Up Idiots. Half star for Buck. There you go. All right, Tighten Up Pod. Make sure you subscribe to our A to Z Sports Podcast Network. We got you on lock here on YouTube. Subscribe, like our Facebook page. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. on a Titans Thursday. Adios.